tears, no tears, no tears up there, sorrow and pain will all have gone. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be So it's good to see each one of you in the house of the Lord this morning. Appreciate you being here. We uh, uh, shared with you a few moments ago some of the things that's been going on in uh, our lives the last few days. It's been different for a pastor. Uh, sometimes uh, the death of your folks gets a little close home, and we. Uh, gonna miss uh, Wiley. Wiley's been my friend a lot of years and I, <laughs> I, I enjoyed a lot of our younger life together and I was uh, and so we'll definitely miss him so you pray for his family as they go through it and then coming even closer home with sis so you you pray. I, uh, I 
been real close to her since Ray passed away. We spend uh, most of the time, we talk three or four times a day till she got sick, and uh, I miss that very much. So you just pray. God knows best. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn in the book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament. want to uh, share with you a little bit, and uh, maybe my thoughts have been sort of changed, and I appreciate the Sunday School uh, lesson this morning very much. It touched a little bit on some of the things that I love and I appreciate. And when Eddie was talking about Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth's nurse fell on him when he was young. And a lot of Bible scholars think it damaged his back till his feet and his legs didn't work. And But how being faithful and how our life infects other people uh, that's sort of what I was going to share with you this morning, and my thoughts has been along this line. What are we going to leave behind? Now, I, I, I shared with you a couple of weeks ago, I think, that uh, a wealthy gentleman in Ice County uh, passed away, and some of them wanted to know, wonder what he left. And I told him he left it all. He didn't take any. We're leaving all that that we work for, but we're leaving more than our material things. We're leaving behind a, a, a testimony or a memory. Now, part of it we leave behind and part of it we'll face again. And I'm going to share a little bit of that with you this morning. Get you to think about what's your life really accomplishing and what are you? Oh, I... I appreciate some of the uh, the thoughts that were said this morning, and I appreciate you as a church more than you'll ever know, and you show me appreciation all the time, and I appreciate that. But folks, we're leaving a lot behind. They'll people remember. I had a privilege to spend some time with uh, one of my nephews Friday night. We were riding down the road we uh, we spent uh, quite a bit of time together and he was talking about some of the things and wanting to know about the church he grew up here in the church has moved away and we were together and he was talking about it he was talking about some of the people that he remembered that had been in the church and had done things in the church and was just sharing a little bit about it my thoughts just kept running back to what I was going to share with you this morning and I'm going to say this to you what kind of record are you leaving behind you you don't escape it by death personal experience I can remember the church for years remember who was faithful to the church, who kept the church going. Our church has been going since 1834, I know because of our deed. Was probably a number of years before that, that they was a Beaver Creek Baptist Church. People have, it's always been church services here. Sometimes it may have been small, but the church has always kept going. They were those faithful few that kept the church going. Today we have those that are faithful and are here to keep the church going, keep the church doors open. They're leaving a legacy behind. I can remember and Kenny's sitting here and he probably heard our grandmother many times. She loved the church and wanted to see the church done and boy she is all the time on us kids about our church attendance and how we came to church and how what kind of life we lived i didn't realize then but she was leaving a legacy to us to carry on you're leaving a legacy for somebody to carry on you're leaving a record of what you stand for 
whether it's good or whether it's bad. The great apostle Paul, I'm going to uh, share it with you in a few moments in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and the 10th verse or a uh, verse or two previous to that. I'm going to read it to you in a little bit, not right now. But he was, he was reminding us that God was keeping record that you and I was going to give an account and we need to leave the right type of legacy for our children and those coming up. I hope, and I've tried my best here in the church to always take time for our children because they're very much a part of the church today, but they'll even maybe the church of tomorrow, they may be the faithful few that's still serving God. What kind of record are we leaving behind? Now, you don't leave your uh, record. It's not for God. People remember what you say and do more than you think. And I want us to be real careful as God's people to leave a good record. Not only for our children, but for the children around us that we're having influence on every day of our life. They're going to remember that. They'll remember each time you had time to talk to them, each time that you ask them about something, they don't forget those things. And you as and one another need to leave a good record with those that are around you. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You might not be here. I don't mean to scare you. I don't mean to bring up things maybe you don't want, but you don't have the promise of tomorrow. The Bible says, boast not of tomorrow, for tomorrow may not come. If it does, the evil is sufficient for the day. Two months ago, and Mary's listening to this, I hope not, that, but I want you to realize two months ago she didn't know she had a thing in the world wrong with her. Now the doctor said nothing we can do. It's done. Folks, we don't know about tomorrow. We don't know what is coming. <laughs> I, I think about Doug when Doug left out. Came in and sat on his recliner, crossed his hands and his feet like he always did to watch the news. That's where Annie found him two hours later. He never, ever knew what was happening. If he had, he would have probably uncrossed his hands or his knees. But he stepped into the presence of God. No promise but what you and I could do the same thing. So we need to live today like tomorrow might not come because somebody is going to remember what we did and how we did it. In Malachi, the third chapter, and I, I'm going to make reference to the rest of this whole chapter and get where we live for just a moment. But in the 14th verse, and I'll read the 13th and down to the 14th, I want you to uh, see where I'm going to with this. It said, Your words have been styled against me, saith the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. God knows what you're talking about. God knows when you're talking to one another, God knows whether you're talking what you should be or not. If you're putting down the church or you're putting down Christians, God knows about it. You're hurting Him. God said, I know your words. They've been styled against me or, and if you're Read what he was talking about. The church has not been doing what it should have been. Christians had been sort of doing and robbing and stealing from God. Not, and uh, they asked God how they'd done it. said with tithes and offering. Then they began to talk about God. They began to put him down. And God said, I know about those words. They're stout against me. They said, went further than that. You say in... What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. 
Now I'm going to say this and I want you to follow where I'm going to. Our actions at time speak louder than our words. We can say things and God's keeping record. But God keeping record of those actions that we're speaking. God knows what the thought and the intent of the heart really is. And we need to be careful what we are doing and how we're doing it. <laughs> By the way, we start at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. About five after, we need to start at 10. God knows what the intent was to be here or not. Let's, let's get on time. Let's be here at 10 o'clock and be ready to start, ready to worship. You're leaving a record. Was it important enough to be on time? It should be. We should be here ready to worship God when the time comes. We're leaving a record behind. What's important to us? What, what finds number one place in us? And God said, you know, I know what your actions are saying. We need to have some actions that speak louder than our words to show to the world that we're concerned about the things of God. Then in the 14th verse, he said, you say in vain to serve God. What's God profit in you? Folks, let me tell you something. You read this chapter and when you read and when I read in a minute out of 2 Corinthians, you're going to find it's profiting you more than you might would think. Last Sunday morning when Cody walked in, he had told me he was coming. He said, I remember the things that you taught me. He said, I may have not always done them, but I remembered. I thought at times he had forgot, but he had not forgot. He still remembered. Said he talked quite often with his companion about getting the kids in church. He said, we're definitely looking for a, a country church to go to. Made my day. Don't forget, they are not forgetting. They're listening. It'll profit after a while. He goes on, he said, is it vain to serve the Lord? To serve, excuse me, you forgive me, it's a little hard to see this morning. Said, so what profit it, it, is it that we uh, have walked and kept thine ordinance, and that we have uh, walked mournfully before the Lord our, of hosts? And now we call uh, the proud happy. Let me tell you something. America is as misled this day as any time in history. They think those that have money and are living good are happy. Not so. If it did, some of our millionaires wouldn't be committing suicide like they are. Money don't bring happiness. Fame and wealth don't bring happiness. Serving God is where happiness is. And you and I need to show our children and our grandchildren that it's important. We need to show one another that it's important to us to come and serve God. I'm going to show you why. And so go on further and he said walk mournfully before the Lord of hosts. And now we call proud happy, and they that work with uh, uh, work wickedness are set up. If that's not the way it is today, there's something wrong. They have tempted God and even delivered. They're tempting God with some of the things they're doing today. Told you some time ago, and it shocked me when I saw it. One of the marches, demonstrations of an unruly 
And that's what I feel like the whole mess is most of the time. When they're carrying the signs to let Jesus Christ come back, we'll crucify him again. Sad country. But yet the news media plays them up. They're doing what's right. God help our country. Boy, I tell you what, church, we better be doing what's right and leaving a good record behind. Because when this is the what the news media plays up, you and I have an important job to show them there's a better way. And that's to walk with it. Then he goes on further. And this in the 16th verse. I want you to show you that there's a book of remembrance kept in individual lives and in God's eyes. You and I are going to face our life again. He said, then they say that uh, fear of the Lord spoken often one to another. Now get, get where it's going. If we're going to really be what we should be, we're going to speak for God. We're going to be that that God wants us to be. He said, spoke one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance. Think God's forgetting? Nope. He's not going to forget a first, the first time you served him and lived for him. They said a book of remembrance was written before him, uh, for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Now, what type of record is going to be written there? If you go to the courthouse, and you let go to the book of records of our judicial system. If they was, if you've been convicted of a crime, that record stands, and that's an earthly record. It doesn't go away. With years of time, it's not erased. It's there. What we're doing for God is not erased either. God said, I'm writing it in a book of remembrance of what you're doing. God's wanting us to live right, act right, and to serve him that we will have influence. And again, I say, our actions speak louder than our words. It's easy to say I'm a Christian, but when we live the standards till the world sees Christ in us, then's when we're doing something. Now, God knows all about what's going on. Nothing hid in your life. Sometimes we need to be reminded of this. Seemingly if we can hide it from uh, the world around us or whatever, we think we're all right. I got news for you. God knows all about it. Not a thing hid from him. He knows where you went. He knows what you said. He knows what you did. And it's kept in a book of remembrance. God knows all about it. In the word of God, if you'll read it, it said, and the books were opened, and the things that were therein was what stood. Paraphrasing it for a moment. God knows all about it. I know when uh, the lost stand in the 16th chapter of Revelation, when he talks about the books were open and the book was open, which is the book of life, to show them they'd never been born again. If you've ever been born again, your name's recorded in the Lamb's book of life and God's keeping a record. You're not hiding anything from him. God knows all about you. He knows where you went. He knows what you said. He knows it all. So we need to stop and imagine, because I'm going to show you in a minute, that you and I are going to stand to give an account for the things written in that book. So it's very important that we live right, talk right, and do the right things. Don't ever down someone else because if you do, look around, we're probably lower than they are. And that's being honest about it. Love one another. 
exalt one another for their work's sake. In other words, lift up one another that their record will look good to the world around us. They may not do what they should, but you're not the judge. God is. God knows what we're saying and what we're doing. He knows all about us. And we're going to face it again. As I said, when you read 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, you'll find you will. Then not only that, but I want us to stop and to think, what does our neighbors think of us? Now, when I'm saying that, there's a purpose for me mentioning this. You and I need to live a life that we have influence that maybe, just maybe, that neighbor that's lost will want to meet Christ because we're different. They're looking at our life, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Your community knows you. They know where you go on Sunday morning. They know when you get up and leave for church, and they know when you don't go to church. If it's important enough for you to get up and go to church, be to church on time, and be there to serve God, they know about it. But when we get to be haphazard living our Christian life, they know that too because they know we don't go. We let other things come between us and go into the house of God. So we're leaving a legacy to those around us. Back during some time ago when we had a Gideon speaker, our Gideon speaker's wife spoke up and has told you about the kids in our neighborhood. And they, they know who I am and they want to be around me because I do things they want to do. You are the same way. <laughs> Tana said to her, great, her grand, grand, uh, grandson, He's, he's my biggest idol. He, he comes running out to speak to me every time I go by. And wants me to take him a ride and decide, decide if I've got time to fool with him. And I take time because that young man, someday somebody's going to need to lead him to the Lord. Those kids that you're maybe are just plain me. <laughs> I was telling Cody the other day, I said, this little fellow, I was hoping he'd get to do something that talks to me all the time. I said, the little rascal tears my hay down, but I love him with a passion love for the best thing for him. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, they don't always do what you want them to, but boy, have that positive attitude because somebody needs to lead them to Christ. And they're looking at your record to see what you're doing. <laughs> then not only that, but I want you to stop and to realize that the record that you're leaving behind may be the deciding factor whether some young person or some neighbor that you live around comes to know Christ. It's so important that we leave a good record behind because we're going to face it again. Flip back to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Want to show you something there. Because we're going to face this thing again. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. I'm going to read, uh, uh, starting with the sixth verse. I'll give you a second to get there. Because I want you to read it along with me. I don't want you to take my word. I want you to read it along with me this morning. The Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthian church in the sixth verse said, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. The reason I'm reading this, I want you to see how quick things can change. Shared with you some time ago, Brain Bird, dreamed he was talking to uh, the boy that sung the primitives high tenor, Norman Williams. They were close friends. Norman died sudden with a heart attack. Brian couldn't come to be at his funeral, and he said he dreamed about uh, Norman. He, he asked Norman, 
He said, in his mind, he just wanted to know something. I asked Norman in his dream, he said, how is it there? He said, Norman answered to him, and he said, I know it was a dream, but Brian said it puzzled him. He couldn't get away from it, so Norman said, from here to there. He said he, he didn't quite understand what he was telling him. So like everybody else who went to the internet, looked it up, you look for up from here to there on the internet, and it'll say immediately. So Norman, he said, Norman was trying to tell me, he said, I left here and immediately I was in the presence of God. Much cold chills run over me think how quick you and I could step in the presence of God. He said to be here in the body means we're absent from God. But he's, then, he's, then the seventh verse said, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Great Apostle Paul said, It'd be better for me. <laughs> he said, I am confident that when I'm gone from my body, I'm going to step in the presence of God. Then Paul said, With that confidence, he said, I'm going to share with you some other stuff. He said, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be acceptable unto him. Now there's your record. You know, let, make sure that record's good. Make sure you have confidence uh, because things is going to happen. Then the 10th verse. He's going to show you the importance of living a Christian life. In, in moral in the 10th verse said for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ now I want you to know you're not going to get by if you, you've ever been uh, born again by God's grace you're going to stand in the presence of God and I'm going to show you what he's going to say about it that everyone may receive the things done in his body it's important if we're Christ to live godly because we're going to face it again. Everything you've done, you're going to give an account for it. God said, I'm writing a book of remembrance back in Malachi. And then he said, every one of you, gonna, uh, and, and him included, was going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. To give him a deed for it, uh, account to receive things done in his body, according to that that he hath done, whether it's good or bad. Now God's going to reward you for doing that that's good. He's going to hold you responsible for that that is not done good. How, what kind of record or what kind of vision am I leaving? For those that are following along. What am I going to have to give an account to God for. That I didn't do. That I should have did. Told you last Sunday the sin of omission. Not doing that that God tells you to. And then the sin of commission. Doing things you shouldn't. And not keeping that record clear. Now folks let me tell you something. It's important that we live for God. It's important that we walk in the matter we should. It's important that we live because we're fixing a record we're going to face again. God help us to live in the matter we should that is touching those around us. Well, let me, it's important to those that are following that we leave a positive message that where we're going. Now, if God lets me live and you go into eternity, if you want me to stand and to share a few words, I want you to leave a positive sign of which way you're going. I want to leave to the world a sign which way I'm going. I want to see my record that I've lived for Jesus because tomorrow may not come. So let's leave behind a record where we're going. And let's leave behind a record that we've served God and been that that God wanted us to be. And then when death comes, it, it won't be an uncertain sign we're leaving. We're leaving. They'll know where we're going and where they can come. How is it with you and God as we stand, heads bowed and eyes closed?
If you have a need, you want to come, you can pray. Come and pray. We're going to have a word of prayer, and then we'll have our time. But if you want to just come and pray and say, God, I want my record good, then you can come and pray. Do that that's right. Folk, let me tell you something. God needs us to live right. God needs us to leave the right example behind. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your blessings. God, I pray that you would challenge us each day that we live closer to you. Be that that you would have us to be. God, I pray that as we look at our lives, Father, we would not be deceived, but Father, that you could see in us that that we need to be doing. God, when we stand in your presence to give an account for our lives, the deeds done in the flesh, God, help them to be good, that we can receive reward for that that is done. God, I pray that you would help us to leave a good legacy behind to those that are following along. Help us, Father, to be that you would have us to be. Bless, Father, I pray the families that's lost loved ones, those that are sick. God, I pray your will might would be done. God, that, that we could give you honor. Give us peace, Father, for that you've done and going to do. And we'll praise you for that we do. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You have a need and want to come? You can come pray or talk. Okay. Don't forget, tonight is our second Sunday night. Be our business meeting. We need to take care of it. Uh, got a couple of things going. So be here for a business meeting at 6 o'clock. Okay.